going to be showcasing a few little interesting hands and some ideas that we saw that you can mess around with with the new Horus monsters that just got revealed. I'm big 30% of you that have not smashed the of the crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so you guys don't miss out on more honest content. Bolt Spider joined us on Discord and or on Discord and showcased a couple of little interesting things that you could do with the new Ferrana card. So, or excuse me, the new Horus support. So this broken card says Horus monster you control cannot be destroyed by card effects unless they target them. And you can send one card from the hand to the graveyard to send a Horus monster from your deck to the graveyard. And you can use that effect up to four times per turn. All right, and then once per turn at the start of the damage step, if your Horus monster battles an opponent's monster, send that opponent's monster to the graveyard. This is not once per turn, do a whole bunch of discarding, and all of your uh, Horus monsters all get to revive themselves from the graveyard once per turn. So this is a pretty cute little showcase of things that we'll be able to do here. And of course, I mean, you see we opened up all of our package here. I, I love the fact that the first showcase is just one of the worst things that you can have here. So we'll go ahead and discard Water Enchantress here. We'll go ahead and get our free value. We're going to search for the Blessing of the Horus here. This is just because this uh, they all include the effect of as long as you have this, congratulations, they get to keep coming on back here. All right, so we'll go ahead. It's in the graveyard. Now we did it. Go ahead and trigger this a second time here. We've got to get our other brick out of the way here so we can go ahead and get our secondary dump there. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to mill Hoppy here. All right, now where do we go from here? We'll go ahead right of Armesia, grab. Okay, that's pretty standard stuff here. Activate right. We'll get our token. Go ahead and grab the Faithful Adventure here. We're going to go ahead and slap this on up. Now we've got to go get our value. And we'll go ahead and discard that. We'll go ahead and grab the Mseti here. Mseti is actually by far the most broken one. As long as you control Pharaonic Sarcophagus, special limit. And then, of course, um, you can send two cards from your hand to the graveyard, all right, including this card, to add one Pharaonic Sarcophagus from your deck to your hand and then draw one additional card. Card is... Uh, pretty good here. All right, so we actually, we're going to go ahead and get the discard for that, which is free real estate. And then, of course, you would get the equip here, but for intents and purposes, we're like, whatever. Both of these go ahead and they get the revives here. Um, I do like the fact that you, you get to st free stack these up. If this card survives to the next turn, you're like, all right, cool, we're good to go. So go ahead and revive all three of them. All right, we'll go ahead and stack them on up. Now we get to make the Coach King Giant Trainer. Yeah, I bet you forgot that this card is going to say, oh, hey, you want to draw three cards? Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get our Detach, get our Detach, get our Detach. All right, well, we got the Aegis of Horus here. So we have one more down that we'll be able to access this turn. Plus, we have Tuning here. Go ahead and Tuning on into the Revolution Synchron here. Oh, boy. And we milled off a Water Enchanter as well, you know? Sometimes when you're good, that's fine. That's just free value for next turn. Go ahead and sarcophagus search for that. All right, so that's down now. All right, so Mr. Revolution Synchron here is going to turn into some pretty crazy stuff here. Uh, if you would be able to synchro summon blah, 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 uh, if this card in the hand is going to get to do its thing here. All right, so we'll go ahead and take our token and that into the clear wing here. Now, Mr. Revolution Synchron is going to get the chance to actually revive itself here since we have this level 7 or higher Synchro Monster. All right, well, let's go ahead and revive that. We get our mill. All right, we're going to go ahead and tune our level 1 together to make the Crystal Wing here. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to revive the Aegis of Horus now as we have only accessed this once at this stage of the combo. And we're going to go ahead and make the IP Mascarena. Obviously, this wasn't, like, too great, but I assure you, on the next turn here, as long as this Pharaonic Sarcophagus sticks around, you have access to four monsters to come back. And I guarantee you, if your opponent doesn't have an out to that, that's 3,000. This is 1,200 times each Horus. So actually, this could be 4,800. This will be 24, and then you'll have 2,500. That's an issue, <laughs> all right? Now, this replay here also is going to showcase some of the uh, the more particulars. I swear we open up for an extra graphic, it's like it's our job or something. It's also not like we don't have Mseti to go search for it or, you know, <laughs> many other option trees here. So we'll go ahead and slam down the Pharaonic sarcophagus. All right, well, we're off to the races here. Go ahead and activate this good card and discard that. As long as you open this with, you know, one of these, you're good to go. Oh, look, we, look, we have two revives down now. Go ahead and activate tuning. Can we get the RNG mill for the fourth? We're going to go ahead and grab the assault synchron here. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Sure, and we milled off on, we milled a pharaonic sarcophagus. That's fine. 
Not a big deal, honestly. All right, we do have the Foolish Burial here. We'll go ahead and, and grab the, we'll be banishing the Water Enchantress here. We'll go ahead and grab our Right of Armesier. I love free real estate. Slam down the Right of Armesier. Go ahead and get up Faithful Venture. Get our token, all right? Go ahead and we're going to revive the Aegis here since we have this. Then we'll go ahead and trigger this to get the Draco back here. All right, we'll go ahead and grab Griffin. Go ahead and discard that. All right, so you could equip here, but all intents and purposes, we're not. We'll go ahead and revive this on up now. So we used our second revive at this stage. Go ahead and drop down this. All right, so now we have our third revive now. Guess what we're gonna make? It's my favorite card in the whole wide world. Giant Coach Trainer here. I love the fact that Pharaonic Sarcophagus just turns into a replenishment of the hand resources. Like, whatever you're investing into this is just going to be paid back to you in literally free. So we'll go ahead and do the free detach three. I'd like to go get my three cards, please. All right. Got another tuning off the top here. So let's go ahead and continue to extend. Grab our Revolution Synchron here. All right, we'll go ahead and mill. Man, we're so good at doing these mills. I tell you what. Go ahead and take our token with our Revolution Synchron. This is why we're not bothering to do the equip because we're just using it as, you know, stepping stones. There is the Clear Wing Synchro now. Now we'll go ahead and revive Revolution, get our mill. All right, go ahead and make, guess what? We're gonna make the Crystal Wing now. So now we've got one negate established with a good chunk of things here. We're gonna go ahead and trigger this. Go ahead and discard the bad value that we drew. All right, go ahead and get our revive. We're just gonna go ahead and synchro summon here. No point in doing the mill. And there is the Baron de Fleur. All right, go ahead and take that. And we're gonna end on IP Baron Crystal Wing. It's not a crazy board, but I mean, you gotta revive four heading on into the next turn, which trust me when I say this, this, the fact that you have all of this, you know, floating value for big attack point monsters is very, very, very interesting. All right, we're gonna pass on over so you can take a look at the early build and some of the uh, thought process that we have here. All right, so this is the early mock-up that we're working with here for the deck. Um, obviously, some of the ratios might not be the most optimal to what you wanna see right now, but the value that you get off of Imseti just, ex you know, just existing is crazy. Like the fact that it's not a very small, like, um, or it's not a very like well-rounded build in terms of like ratios you have for the archetype, but they gave this just enough cards that if it sticks around for the additional turn, imagine you're playing this deck, you top deck the Pharaonic Sarcophagus with a fully loaded graveyard and you just OTK your opponent. Like you're gonna, I'm gonna hear comeback stories about this deck just doing the random left field things that it does. So we have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring just to make sure that you have some sort of defensive options against the meta. We have the triple copies of Assault Synchron here. Um, once you get the chance to see this card in action, it's beautiful. You have triple copies of the Blessing of Horus and then we have only two copies of Vanguard of Horus. Now we also have triple copies of Imseti. Remember, this is the best card that the entire archetype got. We have one Gamma just to ensure that, you know, if they do hand trap our sarcophagus, uh, that you can go ahead and do this. Honestly, this is going to be the reason why you might be able to steal some free games. We have the one copy of Aegis of Horus. This isn't particularly an amazing card. One is fine for extension options. You have the triple Revolution Synchron. You have the one Griffin Rider with your triple Water Enchantress. And of course, we have one Driver, one goal, uh, called by, one Draco back with your one Faithful Adventure. You have the one Foolish Burial with your triple copies of Pharaonic Sarcophagus. You have the triple Right of Armesier, triple copies of Tuning. And we do play one copy of the Protector here. Once per chain, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can swap summon a Horus monster from your hand or graveyard. And if you do, this turn, you cannot swap some another monster with the same original effect of you know this card. And if this is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you can set up a banish it when it leaves the field. Don't necessarily have a good way to toggle for this, but okay. Then we have two copies of Infinite Impermanence. And then of course you have the one unicorn, one IP, one Axis Code, one zombie vampire, one Hope Harbinger, one copy of the Dark uh, 20 or number 23, one Zeus, 
one Chang Ying with one Stardust. Also have one Psyche and Punisher, one Crystal Wing, one Clear Wing, one Chaos Angel, one Baron, and one Excel Synchro here. Wrapping this up. Obviously, you can do more going second options, like number 100 for the OTK through Dragoobleon. It was something that was discussed, but for the very early testing build, um, we didn't include it just for the sake of that. But that is something that you can do. You have a lot of actual different things that you can do with this package. This is just the beginning of the iceberg. I saw somebody trying to play tier elements with this deck. I can only imagine the crazy insanity with that. So what do you think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.